Stumped. I wonder if you're just home from school holidays, have you had a chance to clear out the fridge? Were you a bit ruthless, throw out everything that had gone past its use by date or did you just rely on the sniff test? Um, it's an interesting question. What are the rules in your house maybe? Are you the super conservative, stick by the dates or you like to play it a little bit loose? How do expiration dates work and what's the difference between best buy, use buy, sell buy? <laughs> so on this week's Stump segment, we're going to hear from an expert about how expiration dates, food packaging, food safety, all those things, how they all work. Uh, Dr. Yasmin Probst is from the University of Wollongong. G'day to you, Dr. Probst. Hi, how are you, Kelly? Good, thank you. So how much weight should we put on used by dates? Well, I think it really depends on what the food item is, but a use-by date is there for a reason. I mean, it's, it's on a food product to indicate the time when the food really shouldn't be consumed. And it definitely, definitely should not be sold because it's actually illegal to sell a food past its use-by date. Okay. And who decides which label goes on which product? Well, the manufacturers really do determine the label itself, but they have to be uh, within the requirements of what's called the Food Standards Code. And this is monitored by government, by the Food Standards Australia New Zealand Authority. So they have a few acts to abide by and um, the manufacturers need to work within those rules. Okay. And, and in terms of how they are developed or reviewed, are they, are they constantly updated? They are. Yes, they definitely are. Um, and we also have some monitoring that happens at a local level. So we have uh, the Food Authority here in New South Wales that monitors the food systems as well. And they have their own acts that they abide to. Um, so there's a lot of processing behind the scenes that happens with our food supply to make sure that it's safe and of the best quality for us so that we don't get sick. And what about supermarkets? What role do they have in deciding on these kind of used by or best by dates? Well, they don't really have too much in terms of the used by or best by dates that are actually on the packaged product um, because they're largely determined by the manufacturers. Um, I mean, a best before date on a packet could mean that it can still be sold, so the supermarkets could still have it on the shelves, whereas the used by it, they're not allowed to sell them. But then for some of the fresh produce, it really comes down to the monitoring of the quality of the product itself. So is it still looking fresh, feeling fresh, smelling fresh um, from those basic uh, aspects? And is it within the normal recommended time frame of keeping it as well? And then that's sort of, you know, just up to the supermarket staff to, to keep an eye on, I guess. Um, we've got a little text coming in, people letting us know what they do or not. Um, Joe says he only throws out milk. Um, milk is an interesting one, isn't it? Because, you know, just that, that's sort of an easy one to tell for the sniff test, is it? Or would you be throwing <laughs> out anything that uh, is, is gone by the use by date? Well, milk is a tricky one um, because there are different types of milk. But if we assume it's a pasteurised milk, so it's gone through that high temperature sterilisation process where they try to kill off as many of the bacteria in the milk, um, then it's definitely a case of looking at the used by date. I probably wouldn't be reliant on the smell test because um, <laughs> I'm not sure all bacteria necessarily smell for us at a human level anyway. Maybe animal level, I'm not too sure. That's not my area. But, um, I probably wouldn't trust the smell test. And what about eggs as well? We were sort of toying, asking the question about eggs this afternoon. You know, that often they can be past their used by date and still be pretty good. Um, what, what are some of the, Do you know much about the standards around eggs? Yes, yeah, so with eggs, I mean, it's, it's a similar standard for most food products, so keeping it at the ideal temperature um, for storage conditions. So eggs are, the, are very similar to milk, where you should keep them refrigerated, ideally, to keep their shelf life intact. Um, but there are a few little quirks, actually, with eggs that you can um, test yourself. So if you've got, you know, a torch at home, you can shine a torch through the egg and have a look to see if there are any cracks in the shell. Um, cracks in the shell would indicate that there's some air getting into the egg, which is not really ideal. Um, or even if you see that the egg yolk, so it would be a large blob in, in the middle of the egg, if it's moving around, um, then it means generally that it's an older egg um, or you've got an embryo in there and it's a live egg, mm. which is not ideal. <laughs> it's a, oh, get one of those from the supermarket. Yeah, that would be I'm distressing. Country, yeah. I'm a country girl myself, so that's why I mentioned that. Okay. But, um, <laughs> You can actually tell when you boil an egg as well. So if you've boiled it and the yolk has moved away from the centre, it's probably an indication that it's a bit of a stale egg that you've probably had in your fridge for too long. Right, Eric. Yeah, so check. check. I always find I've got to keep the, if I'm buying more eggs, I don't remember which containers they came in and not, not get them mixed up on the shelf. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, I mean, eggs, you don't want to get salmonella, which is the main um, contamination that you would get with eggs, and that's not very nice at all. 
Is there any food that is particularly dangerous to eat after its expiration date? Anything that you'd really be getting rid of? Oh, definitely your fresh produce, uh, your meats and seafood. Uh, they are definitely um, big red flags for me. Um, milk we've already touched on. Um, they're probably the main, the biggest ones. But being aware generally of what you've got in your fridge and um, I guess regularly checking on, on the dates that are on these products to make sure that you aren't keeping them for too long because it does definitely create a bit of a risk for us. Yeah, Dr Yvonne Probst is with us from the University of Wollongong as we're in Stumped this afternoon talking a bit about uh, rules around expiration dates and how they work and uh, I guess sometimes I guess that we, we sort of, you might have a bit of a, a sceptical concern that the supermarkets are just putting dates on things in the hopes that, you know, you will go, oh, it's out of date, I'll chuck it out. You know, s- spices, things in cans maybe, you just kind of think, well, surely they can last a bit longer than, you know, uh, yeah, I'm sure I've, I've found many things <laughs> years past their expiration date, the back <laughs> of the pantry, that's a bit embarrassing. But, you know, um, can you take a risk with, you know, a bit of cumin, some paprika, like, and are they are they all right to maybe take a bit of a chance on? I guess your spices will have lost some of the quality, so you'll definitely notice that the taste has disappeared. And in theory, um, depending on the type of spice that you've purchased, it should still have a, a date on it, a best before date, definitely. Um, but you also mentioned canned products there. Um, ones that have a shelf life of more than two years don't actually need a best before date. Oh. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a, an interesting fact. Some people are looking for best, best before dates or used by dates on their cans and they can't find one. Well, that's because they're probably are quite stable for at least two years in your pantry uh, because they've been sterilised at such a high temperature, so it's over 100 degrees, the sterilisation, and it makes sure that it seals the food in there in a really airtight environment to make sure that those bacteria don't get in to spoil them. Wow, that's really interesting. Okay, and so they basically... What what would be, what would qualify or what, what examples would you have of something that might fit in that category? Oh, you're testing me now. Um... I can't even think would, would like to, can tomatoes would, or they be sort tomatoes, of... I believe they would have a, um, a, use, a best before date on them. Yeah. But if you have a look in your pantry, um, you should be able to pop up with a few there. So a lot of the products where um, it's generally they're low acid foods, they're the ones that would more, be more likely to be in the can. Um, running through my mind, walking through the supermarket trying to think of one that might. <laughs> Getting to the canned food, baked beans, um, tuna, th- canned seafood, things like that. They um, w- they would all have best before dates yeah, on them. They would all yeah. be fitting in that category. Well, yeah. it's an interesting one. So we should, we, the advice would be really just trust those use those best, <laughs> throw the scepticism out and maybe pay a bit more attention to the, the uh, used by dates. Well, for packaged products, definitely. I mean, there are some, um, you know, it's some loopholes in terms of some of the fresh produce. So the CSIRO actually has some nice information on their website for those people who are interested to have a bit more of a read. But cheese, for example, you can actually cut the mould off cheese as long as you have a two centimetre barrier around the mould and it's still okay to eat. Okay, there you and go. people probably wouldn't think to do that normally, but it's, it's actually quite okay. Okay. <laughs> Thankfully, I think you've answered a few questions for us on Stump this afternoon, uh, Dr. Probes. Thank you for that. And, yeah, we'll, I'll go through the pantry with a, a much maybe finer eye in the future. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.